Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Now, recently I uploaded a video that you guys should definitely check out if you haven't seen it already, called the VGC 2020 uh, Intimidator tier list. Now, in that video, I was just ranking all of the Pokemon with the ability Intimidate in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and there weren't too many of them. So, the video was a little bit shorter. Uh, although I did go into detail as to why I ranked certain Pokemon higher and lower, but today I want to rank something that's a little bit more relevant to the news that we received recently, and that is ranking all of the VGC 2020 Pokemon that have Gigantamax forms. Now, in this video, I want to rank them based off of uh, whether or not they're like... Please excuse me, my pet rat is like drinking water very loudly. I'm ranking them on whether or not uh, it's worth using them as their Gigantamax form or not. Because if you're going to use a Gigantamax Pokemon, you better you better have a reason to. Like, for example, you should definitely be using regular Dynamax Dreadnought because it's able to set up the rain for itself and thus uh, be faster in the rain because of its Swift Swim ability. However, if you're using uh, Gigantamax Dreadnought, it just sets up Stealth Rocks, which isn't the best in VGC. It's alright, I guess, but you would benefit so much more by Dynamaxing and getting the rain up. So that's what I'm talking about today. My question of the day for anyone watching is, what do you think will be the best and the worst Dynamax Pokemon, or the best and the worst Gigantamax Pokemon? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. But we're going to go ahead and get started with this video. I made this tier list template on tiermaker.com. The link will be in the description down below. If you guys want to do me a favor and make your own tier list about what do you think will be the best Gigantamax Pokemon, go ahead and make it and tweet it to me at MoxieBoosted. That is linked in the description down below. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Make sure if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, because I am doing daily VGC content. Or at least I'm trying to. I I'm doing my best. I have exams next week, so for all I know, I'm going to slow down a little bit. So let's go ahead and get into this. Starting off with Gigantamax Charizard. Now, what Gigantamax Charizard does is he has this move called G-Max Wildfire. And people think that it works like Fire Spin, but that's actually not what it is. It works like Pledge moves. So... If you don't know, if you use the move Fire Pledge and the move Grass Pledge on the same turn, it'll combine and just set damage to, or set flames to the other side of the field. So it's sort of like a floor effect, like spikes or something, but it affects them at the end of each turn. They just take damage repeatedly. So it's similar to Fire Spin, but it has no trapping abilities. However, the damage is really good. You can use this on sort of a walling sort of team, but the fact of the matter is Charizard has access to the ability Solar Power, and G-Max Charizard actually cannot use it at the moment, and even when it does, it would benefit so much more from setting up the Sun for itself. Gigantamax Charizard would be able to set up the Sun, and then its next move not only would be Sun Boosted, but it would get the Solar Power Boost as well, which is essentially a Life Orb. So that's actually really, really cool. So that means that Dynamax Charizard is overall more viable than Gigantamax Charizard, at least in, in my mind. Um, but in terms of overall viability, we have to look at Charizard's stats here. Charizard is really, really cool. Um, it is a one of the faster Pokemon in the format, considering the overall speed tier. So if we look at like the fastest Pokemon in the format here, if we set it to Battle Stadium doubles, or just for the sake of consistently, <laughs> consistency, VGC 2020, and we add a Pokemon and rank him by speed, the fastest one is Ninjask, and the slowest ones, or and the rest of the Pokemon fall mostly below like the 100 100 mark so that's that's interesting like especially some of the more common pokemon arcanine uh darmanitan the rotom forms all fall below 100 i know that um Kamo is beneath 100 indeedy duraludon so charizard is one of the faster pokemon although, although there are some faster pokemon up there like you know halucha or salazzle they're not nearly as common as the Rotom forms. So it has a really decent speed tier. On top of that, its special attack is really nice. And I guess if you had the sun up, you would be able to take advantage of solar power. But 90% of the time, I guess you'd be running Blaze to uh, get, you know, that 1.5 special, or the 1.5 on the fire type attacks when you're in, you know, your lower HP range. But the thing is, Charizard also has really, really, really bad defensive typing. Uh, it's taking super effective damage from a wide variety of moves, water, electric, especially rock. Like a rock slide could Oko Gigantamax Charizard. So 
I think for that reason, while it does have a really cool move that can deal damage for, you know, a long time, uh, because it can't trap and because it can't set up the sun for itself, I would put Charizard at a solid C tier. I, I really wish it was better. It's one of the cooler Gigantamax designs, but yeah, Charizard is, is really, really kind of mid. It's, it's the definition of mid. This is like right in the middle of the board. But yeah, next up we have Gigantamax Butterfree. Now, Gigantamax Butterfree has G-Max Befuddle. It's a bug type attack that uh, can inflict poison, paralysis, or a sleep status on the opponent, which is really interesting. It's not guaranteed to do, you know, any one of them. It's random between all of them, but it will, it will affect uh, the match in a huge way. So, in a way, it's really nice speed control. Butterfree does have some pretty decent moves. I believe it gets access to Tailwind. Yes, it does get access to Tailwind in this format. Uh, and of course, if you're going to run a Gigantamax Butterfree, you're most likely not going to be running a Focus Sash. So I guess Gigantamax Butterfree would want to run something like a Life Orb. Um, but its special attack is so, so, like, low for a special attacker, I guess. Like, Charizard's a special attacker. It has, like, 20 more points. But Butterfree, it does it does kind of fall short of being a threat. Uh, its move, though, its move is ridiculous. Being able to throw out poison, sleep, paralysis can really throw off your opponent. Uh, you, if you paralyze, <laughs> paralyze, if you paralyze the wrong thing, then chances are it's it's not going to be able to do its job properly. Um, if you paralyze a Dragapult, it's not going to be one of the fastest Pokemon in the format. It's going to be a very mid-speed Pokemon, uh, making it hard for it to do its job of cleaning up at the end of games, or even just throwing off a strong move now and then, because it is pretty frail. Uh, it'll essentially just be shut down for the rest of the game, barring a Tailwind. So that is really cool. On top of that, Butterfree is able to uh, set up Tailwind as well as Quiver Dances. So the Quiver Dance will raise all of your stats. Uh, the only thing is you're not able to Quiver Dance while you're in your Gigantamax or Dynamax form, so you have to find a way to get that off beforehand. Um, as for moves that it can run, Bug Buzz and Air Slash are usually pretty good, but it also gets access to Sleep Powder plus Compound Eyes. So, this is actually an amazing combination. You have 1.3 times accuracy on your moves, 75 times 1.3. Let's do that really quick. Yeah, so, oh my god, I typed that in completely wrong. 75 times 1.3. That's just because I had my number lock on. 97.5. So, that is an extremely accurate Sleep Powder. Um, it's, it's really, really nice in that sense. It can do a lot of support. It can do pretty much anything you need it to do except for deal physical damage and take hits. So that's where the Gigantamax is really nice. Um, I personally believe that its Gigantamax move is one of the better ones in the game compared to the Dynamax equivalent, which is, um, what's that called? Max Flutterby. So Max Flutterby is let me give that to him real quick max flutter by the effect minus one special attack in your opponent so it's kind of a snarl it's pretty much like a snarl um which is really really nice right but just being able to inflict status on it, on everything is really cool on top of that you could run a hex pokemon next to this you could run like hex gengar or hex dragapult and just deal insane amounts of damage uh, because it's doubled in special attack, or because it's doubled in base power at that point, since they're status. So I would say that Butterfree is going to definitely fall a bit higher on the tier list. Not S tier, but definitely A. Um, somewhere between A and B, actually. Its typing is still really bad. It's weak to flying, rock, ice. I mean, the rock really messes it up. It's weak to fire, too. Uh, but there are going to be some Butterfree running around. I would say... Mm, let me think about these other ones real quick. Yeah, I'm going to say B, actually, because I don't want to throw too many things up in S, because S is, S is like, really rare for Gigantamax Pokemon, in my opinion. Lots of moves are really underwhelming, um, but Butterfreeze is such a nice move that it's, it's like, high B tier, low A tier, in my opinion. Next up, we have Pikachu. Pikachu, I don't even have to think about. Um, it's definitely going to fall in, like, C tier, and I'm going to explain that right now. Some people might be confused. Why isn't Pikachu lower on the tier list? It's it's a Pikachu. But the fact of the matter is Pikachu is able to hold a light ball, uh, making it actually pretty dangerous. Because as you can see, light ball, uh, it doubles his attack and special attack. So its max move is actually going to be doing a decent amount of damage. 
Uh, its max move is G Max Volt Crash, and it paralyzes the opponents. That is guaranteed. It, it is guaranteed to paralyze your opponents. It is one of the best speed control moves in the game. And in the trailer where they revealed this, Pikachu actually paralyzed a Mudsdale. So it went for the attack into its partner and ended up paralyzing the Mudsdale. So the only things immune to getting paralyzed are Pokemon with Limber and Pokemon with. Uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, not a ground typing, but an electric typing, because electric types can't get paralyzed. So that's really, really interesting. Um, it's able to paralyze faster threats than if you if like you're facing a Dragapult. Once again, I use Dragapult as like my top tier speed example because that's just that's just what you're going to see the most of in terms of fast Pokemon. So let's say that there's a Dragapult in the field and you expect them to want to protect this turn. But their partner is at low health and there's like not much of a reason for them to protect. You can attack their partner and still get the paralysis on the Dragapult. That is such an amazing benefit. In fact, I think the only other way of stopping that thing from getting paralyzed would be to run like a lightning rod user. Because if the move doesn't do deal damage to anything, then the move doesn't get its secondary effect off. So one of the ways to counter this Pokemon would be lightning rod. Uh, however, <laughs> once it gets that attack off it's it's kind of disgusting you could run like a timid pikachu with a light ball you run a timid pikachu with a light ball and its special attack is going to be 102 times 2 that is a 204 special attack stat compared to charizard at level 50 compared to charizard at level 50 let's let's look at this pikachu is clearly dealing more damage 161. This is one of the strongest special attackers in the game if you give it a light ball. However, the fact of the matter is its bulk isn't that great. Even with double HP, if you decide to run like a max HP set, it's only going to have 142 times 2. It's going to have 284 HP. That is that is not cutting it. I mean, Charizard can get close to that without Dynamax. Well, not close to it, but it, get, it gets pretty, pretty high up there. It, it's definitely comparable to uh gigantamax pikachu considering how low that hp stat is so that's that's just not great um had it not been such a frail pokemon then it would definitely fall way higher in the tier list guaranteed paralysis is absolutely amazing but yeah because of that because of its pretty bad stats all around besides the light ball boosted stats it's falling just strictly in c tier i cannot put it any higher than that next up we have meowth there we go <laughs> So he's falling in F tier. The reason is, um, he's just, I have used a level 100 Gigantamax Meowth to farm money, and it's hard to keep that thing alive in-game. In-game, versus, like, not real people. Gigantamax Meowth is not good. G-Max Gold Rush, you earn extra money. I don't think that works online, uh, and it confuses everything. Confusion is already pretty low of a chance for it to, uh, affect you in any way, shape, or form, so... I, I cannot recommend this Pokemon. On top of that, its stats are pretty bad. Let's look at Meowth. Also, excuse me, I might be getting a little sick. I forgot to mention that. Meowth, 40 HP, 35 defense, 40 special defense, and 90 speed. Its 90 speed is the only good thing. It gets access to Fake Out, but you can't Fake Out if you Dynamax or Gigantamax, so it's it, it's grossly bad. Do not use do not use Meowth. Do not use Meowth. That, that's just all I'm going to say. So, uh, this is actually where I can start talking about more interesting Gigantamax Pokemon. Machamp. Machamp is a really interesting case. Um, because he has arguably one of the most interesting Gigantamax moves. But, how do I say it? it it's, it's very situational. So, G-Max Machamp gets Max Chi Strike, which it raises its critical hit ratio. Um, so, it's, it's focus energy, right? So I guess if you gave him something like a scope lens, then it could do something, you know, with that, it, it would be able to get like guaranteed crits and all of its future moves. So that's, that's really cool, right? But it's got like low speed, um, and fighting isn't the best defensive typing. You're weak to flying, psychic, and fairy, which are all very, very common. Um, however, with that max form, you are going to be doing some pretty, pretty great damage, um, but the thing is, in order to get the max, excuse me, in order to get the max benefits from this G Max move, you kind of have to wait until you're not G Maxed anymore. Uh, and I guess I, I guess you can benefit with your partner Pokemon with it. You could run like a crit team because you get a focus energy up for your entire side, right? So let's say you have a sniper Pokemon. Who gets sniper in this generation? 
All right, uh, we'll just go with Drapion. So he has the ability Sniper. Critical hits do um, 1.5 times 1.5, so it does double damage. You could run Night Slash, and because you're at plus three critical hit ratio, because you get the focus energy up, you get one of the strongest Night Slashes in the game because it's it's a guaranteed crit. But at the same time, that's so gimmicky that it's like not great. And in order from a champ to benefit from this, once again, it has to wait until it's done Gigantamaxing, uh, because its only move that has a high crit ratio that's worth using is Cross Chop. And even that only has 80, 80 accuracy. So it's kind of... It's it's weird to rank here. It's it's definitely a gimmick. This is definitely a gimmick Pokemon. And if it was able to use Max Knuckle, which it can't, um, then it would get plus one attack. Granted, it's it's a much weaker move because I think it maxes out at 90 base power. But it would be able to like raise its attack and do more and more damage. And then when it's done doing that, its entire side has plus one attack. Like, it, for every time that it used it, too. So, comparable... Or, comparing to, uh... Comparing to regular Dynamax Machamp, I would say Gigantamax Machamp is not as viable. Uh, and to try to use it over regular Machamp is kind of kind of gimmicky. So I put it, once again, at a solid C tier. Other than that, like Machamp would have been amazing if it had a, like any other... If it had any other... Um, effect really like imagine if it if g max cheese strike was a fighting type move that raised your speed gigantic machamp would be ridiculous um but yeah no it's it's not that great the only other reason i could see to use it is because it's one of the few gigantic pokemon that doesn't really lose anything from getting burnt um a lot of a lot of physical attackers don't like getting burnt but its ability guts makes it so you know if you do get burnt you only benefit from it so that's cool yeah, I, I'm done talking about Gigantamax Machamp. It's it's so strange. I don't know if it's like good or just okay, but I'm gonna say it's okay. Next up, we have Gigantamax Gengar, which is actually really really interesting. It lost its ability to trap Pokemon when it lost its Mega Form, but it got it back in its Gigantamax form, which is kind of funny. Uh, the only thing is you're forced to uh, <laughs> you're forced to use a move before you can do it. So. Where is Gigantamax Gengars? Forget the name of it. Here it is. G-Max Terror. A ghost type attack that Gigantamax Gengar can use. This Pokemon steps on the opposing Pokemon Shadow to prevent them from escaping. So Ghost is actually a really great offensive typing in this game. You're going to be doing decent damage with it every time you use it. And Gengar also has a really, really nice speed stat. So something that I could see someone trying to do is running like a nasty plot protect shadow ball sludge bomb set i guess and that'd be really cool but do you get perish song that's the thing right so gengar is not able to like use perish song and then gigantamax and trap them effectively the reason that mega gengar was so beautiful is because it was its own perish trap pokemon you're able to perish song and you're trapping them already so it was great but with this one, you require your partner to tr to click the Parish Song. So, trapping isn't that isn't that like um, Parish Trap in general isn't that great anymore because of that. But being able to trap your Pokemon or your partner's Pokemon and keep them from switching is pretty okay. I could see maybe Gigantamax Gengar being on control teams uh, because it's able to prevent your partner from resetting their stats, from resetting like toxic damage. So, I guess it's okay. But it's still one of the more frail Pokemon. Even with double HP, it's got 60 to begin with, and its defenses aren't that great. So it's not going to be taking hits as well as things like Gigantamax Machamp. However, its move is pretty... It, it's arguably better. I'm going to say that. So overall, I would have to put Gengar probably around B tier with uh, Butterfree here. Next up, we have Kingler. And Kingler I haven't looked too much into... Uh, Kingler has a pretty strange move. It just lowers speed, but it doesn't, you know, lower it by one stage. It harshly lowers it. So it's one of the best speed control moves in the game because it hits both opponents and halves their speed every time you use it. And it's a water type move. There isn't really much to say about Kingler past that. Kingler is not a very viable Pokemon. However, it can do pretty insane amounts of damage with Sheer Force. Uh, Sheer Force boosted moves are actually pretty cool. I don't know how Sheer Force interacts with his Gigantamax move. If Sheer Force keeps it from doing its secondary thing, however, keeps the damage, 
uh, 130 base power Gigantamax moves, if, if that works, I, I'm not sure if it ignores it, but Sheer Forest boosting that is ridiculous. On top of that, you know, Kingler has a pretty okay speed tier for this game, and with that Gigantamax form, it's going to have double HP, so its physical defense is now usable uh, before the 55 HP is really holding it back, and you can even invest a little bit in special defense to make it good, so we haven't seen it yet really how how it affects with it so if it does affect it in the way that i think it does which i think it probably does sheer force would be ridiculous um however just based on its based on its like actual move i'm only gonna go based on its actual move it's pretty okay i would once again put it mid tier i'm gonna put him at c um i, I don't know how how great that's going to be but yeah, I have to put him at C. I want to put him higher. I really, I really do. But I'm not entirely sure how his ability interacts with uh, Dynamax moves. Now, Lapras. Lapras is one of the first Pokemon that I want to shoot all the way up to A, possibly S tier. Now, I'm going to go through Lapras's stats and what it can do. And I might convince myself enough to put it up to S tier. I might. So Lapras's move is actually really, really good. It is an ice type attack. It's an attack. It does damage that reduces the damage uh, for five turns. Now, that is damage in general. Essentially, what you get is an Aurora Veil. It sets up Aurora Veil, the best screen in the game. It lowers all damage by 50% for the next five turns. So that's really, really, really busted, in my opinion. On top of that, Lapras has some pretty decent stats and a great offensive typing in ice and water. Defensively, it, has, it leaves a lot to be desired. But 85 attack, not great. 85 special attack, not amazing. But it doesn't need that. It is so bulky. With 100 HP doubling that and investing into your special defense or even your physical defense, you're doing really, really nothing to this. You're really doing nothing. Uh, and on top of that, it's immune to Draco Vicious, Vicious Rend. So Water Absorb, it's only going to heal you. That's really, really cool. It has a lot of things going for it. I believe it also gets Icy Wind. It does. It gets Icy Wind. You could run a physical set with Dragon Dance. Uh, freeze Dry. You're able to hit a lot of really common Pokemon in the format. Dracovish will get one shot. Gastrodon will get one shot. And it even gets Life Dew and Perish Song. So this Pokemon is just amazing. I didn't expect Gigantamax Lapras to be like top tier in this game, but they managed to make it one of the best Pokemon we've seen. So I think I'm going to keep it A. Because there is one Pokemon that I, I am definitely going to put in S tier. Uh, and we'll get to him in like in like two. I'm, I'm going to be Snorlax's S tier. You know, spoiler alert. But next up is Eevee. Eevee, you are going right to F tier. And the reason Eevee is going into F tier is because its move, I don't even want to read its, its move. It's G-Max Cuddle. It just infatuates the opponent. And that is kind of a 50-50. If they're the same gender as you, it's not going to work. And on top of that, Eevee has some of the worst stats in the game. 55 HP, 55 attack, 65 special defense, 50 defense, 55 speed. It has nothing going for it except for adaptability. Adaptability will make your max move very, very strong. But in all honesty, you could just use last resort. You could do like that last resort gimmick and it would work just as well. There's not much of a reason to use Gigantamax Eevee. If all it's going to do is infatuate the opponent and make it like a 50-50 if they attack you or not. And on top of that, it's a 50-50 to get that 50-50 because of the fact that gender ratios tend to be 50-50 in this game. I've said 50-50 a lot, but it's like G-Max G Eevee is bad. Like that's, that's all I really have to say. It's not good. <clears throat> Please excuse me. My throat's getting like so dry because I'm sick. So next up, we have Gigantamax Snorlax. I'm just going to go over what this move does real quick. I know it by name already. It's one of the few I know by name because it's so good. G-Max Replenish. A normal type attack that Snorlax can use. This move restores berries that have been eaten. Now I'm just going to put some things on screen and you guys, you guys around will stand. <laughs> I can't speak today. You guys will understand why Snorlax is so good. You ready? Okay. Here we go.
There we go. That's why Snorlax is so good. Or, I guess, not body press, but stomach tantrum. That's why Snorlax is so good. Look at this thing. Not only can it, like, belly drum up Gigantamax, become one of the thickest Pokemon in the game because of its 160 HP stat, but it can also get its berry back by itself by going for G-Max Replenish. Now, granted, some tests have shown that G-Max Replenish doesn't always give you back your berry. It, we don't know what the likelihood is. It looks like it's 50-50 right now. But just the fact that there's a chance to get back your berry and eat it immediately makes this such a good Pokemon. It is so good. Snorlax was already one of the most centralizing Pokemon in previous formats, like 2018 and 2017. But now it's going to be even better as a Gigantamax Pokemon. Also, aesthetically, it's adorable. It's just great. Snorlax is S-tier. There's not much of an argument to that. Next up, we have uh, G-Max Garbodor, which all it does is poison your opponent. That's pretty cool. Um, Garbodor has a great defensive typing in Poison. It's only weak to Psychic and Ground. And it has some pretty decent abilities. Aftermath is great. Stench is okay. Weak Armor could be pretty cool. Um... But offensively, it's only kind of mid. It's got 95 attack, bad special attack. It's definitely more of a bulky Pokemon. So if you want to run sort of a stall team, I would definitely recommend this Pokemon uh, because of its defensive typing and the fact that its Gigantamax move will um, G-Max Malador. It always poisons your opponent. <clears throat> My voice just cracks so bad. I'm going to get so sick, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> it always poisons your opponent. That's that's really it. Um it's, it's just good. It's good. I guess tech it gets. Um, it's able to go for clear smog to remove stat changes. I believe it also gets access to... No, it does not. It gets access to stomping tantrum. I know that. So it has the ability to hit things that it would normally not be able to, like steel types and uh, opposing poison types. Opposing. Opposing poison types. Um, nothing else really matters. I really wish this thing got access to poison jab. But we're stuck using Gunk Shot on it. So, it, it's pretty mid. I like I have to put this guy pretty mid as well. I would say B tier. It's definitely better than than these three in my opinion. So, yeah. Just, just bulk wise too, it's pretty good. Now, Corviknight is an interesting case. We have no idea how prevalent screens are going to be in this metagame. However, with uh, the relevance of things like Grimmsnarl, which has the ability to set up screens, and the fact that G-Max Lapras will eventually be legal. Corviknight could be one of the best Pokemon as well. Its move is G-Max Wind Rage, and it removes the effects of moves like Reflect and Light Screen. That's it. It doesn't, like, boost its speed or anything, but it could be okay. It's very situational. Corviknight in general is, like, it's a good Pokemon. I think it's a good Pokemon, but it's not, like, metagame defining. It's one of the better Steel types as well. It's got 98 HP, 105 defense, and 85 special defense, so it's extremely bulky. It's got a usable attack stat, granted it's a little bit low, and it has access to mirror armor, so it's unable to be intimidated, and if Pokemon that want to go for coverage moves like Mystical Fire target it with Mystical Fire, it's it's going to like lower their special attack, because it it re it reflects the, uh, the effect of Mystical Fire, which always lowers special attack, back onto the special attacker that used it, so like... I don't know. So like, you know, if you want to go for mystical fire onto it, it's like a, it's like a, it's a pea brain, it's a pea brain play. And like, that's what I'm going to say here. So it is, it has some pretty interesting things going for it. As a Gigantamax Pokemon, I'd say it's probably going to fall in the same area as Garbodor where it's like situational. Um, so yeah, like it, it's, it's just okay. Next up we have Orbital and that is another situational Pokemon. I already know where it's going to fall. It's going to fall in B tier. Now, Orbital is really cool. Its move increases uh, gravity, or it puts the effects of gravity on the field. So nothing's touching the ground anymore. You're able to hit everything with Earthquake, and moves have slightly increased accuracy. Not really. Um, every Pokemon has slightly less evasion, which makes it effectively greater accuracy in all your moves. So you could go for some pretty interesting things. It does have access to Hypnosis, and under gravity, Hypnosis is very accurate. Uh, you have a pretty low chance of missing, so that's really cool. Uh, on top of that, it has access to screens, I believe, reflect, light screens. So as a Pokemon in general, it's pretty good. 
Its typing is okay. It's not the bulkiest. Bug and Psychic are weak to a lot of things. You're still weak to bug types because you're Psychic. You're weak to Dark, Ghost. You're weak to Fire, Flying, Rock. It's very frail in that sense. Uh, but in general, Orbital could be pretty good. Just in the fact that it makes it harder for you to miss things like Rock Slide. You're able to hit everything with Earthquake. Your Hypnosises are more accurate. And honestly, if Groudon was legal in this format, Precipice Blades would be really good next to it. So I am going to go ahead and throw Orbital right there in B tier with Corviknight. Next up, we have this guy right here. And I'm going to put him in D. And the reason I'm putting him in D is because I, I went over that in the, at the beginning of the video pretty much. Um, this is G-Max Dreadnought. Now, regular Dreadnought has Swift Swim and is able to set up the rain for himself. G-Max Dreadnought has Swift Swim and is not. Its water type move sets up Stealth Rocks. Now that's okay. That's an okay move. But I would much rather be able to set up the rain and boost my other water type moves and deal more damage every time I use it. Stone Surge is just not that great. It, it's okay in singles. It's probably a great move in singles. It's probably one of the best. It's one of the best Gigantamax Pokemon in singles. But not in doubles. It just it just doesn't translate correctly. So yeah, that, that's all I really have to say about him. Um, I'm as a Pokemon, he's great, right? But definitely as a Gigantamax Pokemon, he falls like D tier. Next up, we have what? Do, what's your name? Uh, Colossal. We have G Max Colossal, and I, I actually forgot what his does. To be honest, G Max Colossal. Uh, he gets G Max Vocalith. It's a Rock type attack that Colossal can use. And it continues to deal damage for to the opponents for four turns. So it's a rock type move that does. I'm assuming it doesn't trap, right? So I, I don't think it traps. I believe it's similar to Charizard's, but it's it's rock type damage. So that's pretty good, I guess. Um, I would say it's definitely not as good as regular Max Colossal because Max Colossal is able to set up. Oh, excuse me. You're able to set up the sand for yourself. And thus get a special defense boost, making you even bulkier. So that one I feel like pretty definitively falls in C tier, along with Charizard. <laughs> they, they suffer from the same issue, to be honest. Alright, so next up we have the Apple Pokemon. If I could spell that right. There we go. So we're going to go with GMAX Appleton first. Uh, it's a grass type move, GMAX Sweetness, and it heals the status conditions of allies. Okay, um, you're going to go ahead and go right there. <laughs> that isn't great. That isn't great. Uh, I mean, Appleton in general is a pretty okay Pokemon. Thick Fat makes it so he's only times two weak to ice type moves, and he also has a resistance to fire type moves. So, yeah, like he, he's he's got some pretty cool tools. I've already made a moveset guide video on Appleton. Appleton has some pretty cool, uh, some pretty cool tools. On top of that, he has things like Ripen and Gluttony, so he can make some things work. But his GMAX move is just underwhelming. He definitely suffers from the same issue as you know Charizard and Colossal, where he'd probably much rather have his Terrain. Um, but at the very least, it's not like it's not removing the Dragon type thing where he can lower attack. So at least he can still use Dragon type moves. Um, I guess he's okay. He's okay, but he's, yeah, uh, I'm still going to put him in D tier, because he, he really would rather have the rain, not the rain, he'd rather have the grassy terrain than anything. Next up, uh, Flapple, G-Max Tartness, and it reduces the evasiveness. Okay, well, you're, you're going there. <laughs> yeah, no, the evasiveness thing is actually pretty okay, though, for Flapple. Um, the reason being is it combos well with its ability, which is Hustle. So, in singles, it'd be okay, um... Hustle, it, you know, it makes physical attacks 50% stronger, but they're only 80% accurate. If you lower their evasiveness, then you're more likely to hit them. So I guess in singles it's okay, but Flapple in general isn't the best VGC Pokemon. So yeah, he falls pretty pretty much in D tier. Next up, Sandaconda. Now Sandaconda I'm definitely going to put up in either B or A tier. I'm going to say A tier. And the reason I think Sandaconda falls in A tier is because Sandaconda has access to some pretty great tools. It gets Drill Run, it gets Earthquake, it also gets Glare, which is the best paralysis, uh, the, the best paralysis move. It doesn't miss, it affects ground types, and uh, 
it's just it's great speed control on top of that he also gets access to things like coil and his g max move the thing that defines him traps pokemon like it, it's a sand tomb so it traps them for four to five turns let me let me actually find the name of it sandaconda g max sandblast yeah they're trapped in a raging sandstorm for four to five turns so it doesn't set up sandstorm it sets up a sand tomb so they take damage at the end of each turn and they're trapped that is that is that's a great move that's actually a great move and it's also not like lowered in base power like like g-max knuckle it's literally just a strong ground type move that sets up a sand tomb and does not allow the opponent to switch so he's definitely like a tier in my opinion Next up, Toxtricity, and we're nearing the end of this video, so I can, like, get some water from my throat. Uh, Toxtricity. G-Max Stun Shock. An Electro-type attack that uh, Gigantamax Toxtricity can use. This move poisons or paralyzes the opponents. I mean, Toxtricity is an okay Pokemon. I don't believe this is going to be a sound-based move. If it was a sound-based move, then its ability would boost it. Uh, but I don't believe it is. So... I would definitely put that kind of in B tier. Being able to paralyze opponents, it's sort of like Butterfreeze. It just doesn't have the ability to put them to sleep. So it, it's literally just like a poison type version of Butterfreeze, um, or an electric type version of Butterfreeze. So it's a great offensive typing, but it can't put things to sleep. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna like throw him right there in B tier. I don't really think he can go lower or higher than that. Sent a Scorch. I believe that one just sets up, um, that one just sets up Fire Spin. Yeah, traps opponents for four to five turns. Uh, Sent a Scorch overall, I think, is an okay VGC Pokemon. It's not the best. But I guess with that increased HP, he's able to take physical hits a lot better since he has that low defense stat. But he also just tanks special defense hits. Like, it, it is, he's, he's not taking, like, anything from that. Although the bug fire typing is really bad defensively, you're weak to water, rock, um, flying. Like, there's a lot of things he can't take. His move is probably one of the best options he has. I feel like he would benefit a lot more from the sun, but less so than Charizard would. He He's definitely, like, mm, I'm, I'm going to have to put him C tier. He's, like, better than Charizard, but but, like, not as bad as these three. Yeah, like, I don't know much more to say about him. He, he's definitely going to be okay. He's usable, but he's not, like, up here. Next up, Hatterene. Now, Hatterene, I'm not familiar with hers. Hatterene, G-Max Smite, a Fairy-type attack that Hatterene can use, confuses opponents. Okay, well, reasons to use G-Max Hatterene. Not much. <laughs> not much. It's like Meowth. It gets extremely bulky. Um, however, you should really just use a regular Hatterene. Regular Hatterene gets Psychic Terrain when it uses its move. It's it's better, and Fairy-type... Or not, no, it doesn't get Psychic Terrain. It, um, it gets Misty Terrain, which it honestly benefits more from, in my opinion. It's, you know, immune to sleep. It's immune to paralysis. You just can't status it, and your entire team benefits from it. Since Hatterene is sort of like a support Pokemon in this format with Trick Room, it's, uh... Yeah, I would definitely prefer the, the Misty Terrain. However, the confusion isn't that bad, I guess. It's okay, but it's still like, it's still like Meowth levels of moves. <laughs> now, Grim Snarl. Grim Snarls is another move that people thought would be busted, but it's actually not as bad in testing. So it's a dark type move, and it lets out a huge yawn that can lull the opponents into a sleep on the next turn. Basically, it it affects the the opponent with yawn. So if it doesn't switch out after getting yawned, it's going to go to sleep, which is really really powerful. Um, but the thing is, in testing, it was shown it only affects the Pokemon you target, and it isn't 100%. It doesn't happen every time you use it, so you're not forced to switch every time. So, it's like one of the better ones. It's definitely one of the better ones. I would have to put him in B tier, but he is like low A tier in my opinion. I would say, just based on his overall viability, I have to put him in A tier. And the reason being is because, like, he still has Prankster, you know? And while he, when when he's not Gigantamaxed, he's able to do a lot of cool things for your team. He's able to set up screens, which makes him even bulkier in the long run. Because he gets Light Screen. He gets Light Screen. He get Stop typing in Light of Ruin. He gets Light Screen. He gets Reflect. He gets Fake Out. He gets Thunder Wave. Like, he has so many support options. 
and he's also like a really strong physical attacker. He has 120. Like that's that's great. You can go for spirit breaks. You can go for play roughs. The thing even gets darkest lariat, which is really cool because you ignore, you ignore stat changes. So that, that's the only reason he's a tier is because all of his other tools. But his Gigantamax form, it's it's like B tier, right? But just because of his stats overall, like he, I'm putting him in A tier. Uh, next up, Alchemy. And Alchemy's is really interesting, I believe. Um, yeah, so it heals your HP, so <laughs> it's actually pretty good. I believe it works like Life Do. Um, it's going to, or not like Life Do, I believe it's like based on your damage. So every time you use it, um, you're going to get a percentage back of your opponents. I'm not a I'm not 100% on that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if that is how it works, it's actually pretty decent because each of your opponents, each of your um each of the Pokemon in your side get health back, not just Hatterene. Or not just Alchemy. So it's it's pretty okay. I'd say it's pretty good actually. Um on top of that, Alchemy has some pretty cool moves. It's able to get decorate, which just, you know, it raises <laughs> it doubles your attack, your special attack of your partner, so it's like a permanent helping hand in a way. Um And that that's honestly a really dangerous move in my opinion. I'm not sure why Alchemy isn't more popular. It has a pretty low HP stat and low defense, but its special defense is good enough where I think it's usable. On top of that, it's pretty good special attack. So, Alchemy overall, uh, it also gets screens and Encore, so that's kind of cool. I would say Alchemy is probably A tier. I'd put it A tier. I would definitely put it A tier, yeah. Caparaja. We're in the last two right now. Caparajas. He sets up Steel type Stealth Rocks. Um. But there isn't much of a reason to use it over regular Dynamax Caparaja. Um in that sense. Let me let me think about this. Let me think about this. So regular Dynamax Caparaja, his steel type move raises his defense, right? And it's it's really strong coming off of his, you know, amazing attack stat. And the steel type stealth rocks don't really do too much for it. So I guess based off of that. I would put it pretty low. I put it like I put it C tier. Cause I'm basing this mostly off of like whether or not it's worth using over its regular form. Snorlax is definitely better than its regular form. These three are all better than its regular form. These three are all better than its regular form, but you know you can go either way. These guys are just okay. I would personally not use them. These guys are kinda bad. And these guys are awful. So yeah, I think I think he sits kind of with the C tier. I would definitely prefer to raise its defenses. It's got really, really great HP, but low defense, so being able to boost that just only benefits this Pokemon. On top of that, it also gets, like, it gets Earthquake, right? So I guess you could boost your special defense even if you were Gigantamax, but Dynamax is also able to boost the physical defense, so it's, yeah, no. Yeah, you're falling in C tier, bud. Next up, we have G-Max Depletion, which is, um, what's your name? Duraldon's move. Now, this one's actually pretty interesting. Where are you? Uh, Duraludon. Depletion. So, it lowers the BP. It's kind of like Spite. Personally, I'd put this one a little bit lower, too. Um, I'm going to have to put him in... I'm going to have to put him in D tier, to be honest. Uh, the PP thing is only really useful for stalling out moves with lower power... Or not lower power, lower power points... So like Gyro Ball, you could completely remove that. Like if if you have a Fairy type in your team that doesn't want to take a Gyro Ball, because Gyro Ball has such such low PP, you can go for a G Max Depletion and lower that to the point where it's not usable. But the thing is, the Dragon type move that he could have if he was just regular Dynamax is so much better. You could run a Weakness Policy Duraludon, and you know you absorb the hit because you're so bulky with your doubled HP, and then go for your your Dynamax move lower their attack and just eat the hits even better every time you use it so yeah he falls pretty definitively in d tier in my opinion uh he you could make an argument for c tier but eh, i don't know but yeah that, that those are my opinions on like you know how they rank based off of just the moves that they're able to use and how viable they'll be overall if a pokemon was worse than it's just regular you know, Dynamax form, then I put it lower on the tier list. If it was much better than its regular Dynamax form, I put it higher. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I explained that at the beginning. Thank you guys for watching this. Um, I'm sorry I sound sick right now. I 
I'm sorry, it's just, it's awful. I could hardly handle my own voice. But if you guys enjoy this video, leave a like, subscribe, do whatever. Um, I'll try to sound better tomorrow. But yeah, with that, I'm going to call, guys. Thank you so much for coming out. Links to everything in the description. Links to this, you know, format that you can make your own tier list with. Links to my Twitter, links to my Discord, all in the description. Uh, but with that, I'm going to call it. Everyone have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.